one cocktail, four versions of its origin, it's the Moscow Mule. Moscow Mule has a tumultuous history and intriguing origin. As this alcoholic beverage gets older, the story behind its history gets bolder. Hi, in today's video, we'll talk about the four versions of the Moscow Mule's origin, why the copper mug is the preferred vessel to drink it, and how this cocktail has changed every drinker's perspective. Let's get started. First, let's answer this question. Where did the Moscow Mule come from? The Moscow Mule is thought to have originated in the United States in the 1940s. Vodka was rarely consumed in America at the time as it was widely perceived as a Russian beverage. John G. Martin, the owner of Hubline and Brothers, one of the first American vodka firms, was trying to break the mold. However, he was having significant difficulty persuading Americans to sample this alcohol. Martin found himself in the company of his friend John Jack Morgan, owner of the Hollywood Cock and Bowl restaurant and president of Cock and Bowl Products, one night at the Chatham Hotel in New York City. Morgan was having trouble marketing a ginger beer that his company had created at the time. The two decided to combine some of their vodka and ginger beer on the spur of the moment. With ice and a squeeze of lemon juice, it was served. The first cocktail was delivered to actor Broderick Crawford, who happened to be in the building at the time. The cocktail was given the name The Moscow Mule a few days later. The Moscow half of the name refers to vodka's birthplace in Russia, while the mule part refers to the ginger beer that gives the beverage its kick. These three gentlemen had no idea that they had just created a legendary cocktail that would be loved for decades. Martin and Morgan understood right away that they had made something remarkable. They decided to collaborate in order to properly brand the Moscow Mule and advertise it as a new drink. Martin had recently purchased the Smirnoff distillery, resulting in an overabundance of vodka. This gave him the confidence to pursue this new business idea without fear of failure. The cocktail's popularity first grew on the West Coast, particularly in Hollywood. This idea was a big success, especially considering that all three of its creators were wasting time and money with their previous business ventures. Vodka began to gain acceptance as a drink in the United States from this time on. It is now one of the most widely consumed spirits in the country. Though most recognize Martin and Morgan's version of the Moscow Mule as its inception story, there is some debate about how it came to be. One such person claims to have been present that night as well was Wes Price. Price was Morgan's bartender, who said he helped come up with what would eventually become one of the most famous cocktails. Martin and Morgan were apparently conversing with Price that night, who was seeking to get rid of some surplus stuff in his basement. Smirnoff vodka and ginger beer were among the dead stock he had. As a result, he recommended mixing the two drinks together. There's another version of this story as well. Instead of Price, this version has Rudolf Cunnett, president of Hubline's vodka subsidiary, Pierre Smirnoff. According to one report, the three were out for a casual night of drinking when they decided to mix their vodka with ginger beer on the spur of the moment. It's unclear who was present on the night this drink was concocted. Martin and Morgan, on the other hand, were undoubtedly the catalysts for its arrival on the scene. There is still another version regarding the creation of the Moscow Mule. This is the most remarkable variety of the account because it contains a great deal of information. It also says that the Moscow Mule was invented in Los Angeles rather than New York. But before we dig in, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, ring that notification bell to be updated as we upload more fresh and new videos for you. Going back to the video. Sophie Birozinski had recently arrived in the United States as a Russian immigrant. She packed 2,000 copper cups with her on her tour. Sophie's father, the owner of the Moscow Copper Corporation, a copper foundry in Russia, was hoping Sophie could sell them for him in America. These copper mugs were designed by Sophie in Russia. Her father's company was in charge of the stamping presses. When she arrived in the United States, however, she found it difficult to relocate them and had no storage space. Sophie's husband Max eventually became tired of the mugs cluttering the house. He warned Sophie that unless she found a buyer for the mugs, he was going to discard them. Sophie was anxiously attempting to find a customer for her mugs 
wandering from bar to bar in Hollywood. According to the Moscow Copper Corporation, when she ended up at the Chatham Hotel one night, she ran into Martin and Morgan there. She eventually joined in on their chat and spent hours concocting a cocktail that would fit in the copper cup. She had to provide an additional inducement in order to sell these men her mugs. The Moscow Mule was born as a result. This drink was created to complement the copper mug's cool characteristics. An alternate version of Sophie's narrative claims that Morgan's girlfriend, Osalyn Schmidt, was the one who provided Morgan with the copper mugs he used for his cocktail. Schmidt is thought to have inherited a copper-related firm. But why do Moscow mules come in a copper mug? So now you know the story behind the copper mug, but why is it such an important element of the Moscow mule lore? For one thing, employing particular vessels for drinks is not uncommon. Take mescal, for example, which is generally served in a capita or a large bowl-like structure. The cocktail's vessel should enhance the flavors, smells, and presentation of your drink. That's exactly what the Moscow Mule's copper cup does. In this cup, the drink's sweet, punchy flavor and aroma are amplified. The mug also keeps the liquid cold, which is important for this cocktail. It also has a distinct appearance because of the copper mug. This mug can be seen from a mile away and you'll know right away that it's holding a Moscow Mule. In addition, the copper mug contributed significantly to the popularity of the Moscow Mule in the United States. Martin shot two Polaroid photos of the bartender carrying the drink in a copper cup after it was produced. He kept one and left the other in the bar for the show. Martin would go around bar crawling after inventing the drink, showing bartenders his new cocktail as well as the copper mugs it was served in. He also photographed bartenders with a bottle of Smirnoff in one hand and a copper Moscow Mule mug in the other. Where to find a modern Moscow Mule? This cocktail has been popular for decades and is only getting more popular. It was even included on Hulu's original drama, The Great, in the fourth episode. The program was titled Moscow Mule, and the audience was told that the cocktail was conceived by Catherine the Great's lover Leo in the 1700s, but this is merely a fun piece of fiction, not the genuine history of the beverage. Despite its name, this cocktail has roots in the United States. It does not, contrary to popular assumption, originate in Russia. The Moscow Mule, which was once simply a trendy drink in Hollywood, is now a popular beverage offered in pubs and restaurants around the country. You'll know precisely what you're getting into the next time you see this beverage on a cocktail menu. So what do you think of this history of Moscow Mule? Have you tried one? Well, we love to know about your experience, so let us know in the comments section below if the taste is so worth it. And hey, if you've enjoyed the video, give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so we continue giving you the best content, fresh and new. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.